We'll start off today with some yellow and white, and I've already put a little clear gel and white just along the sky area, nowhere else. But we're going to be doing a very soft, as you as you know by the thumbnail, a very soft, kind of pleasant winter scene. So here we go. With this yellow, I'm going to place it down right here in the middle. A lot of mist in this painting today. I suppose we could have sketched, you know, that might have been that might have been a good thing. I'm going to grab a little yellow ochre as I work out from the sun area. You know, sketching probably would have been a good thing, but I didn't do it yet. I may do it later. We'll see. We'll see. We're sort of not locked in. We can make changes on the fly. That's a good thing. We'll work this out. Make sure you got plenty of yellow along the base of the sky. Very soft. Very misty. That's what's going to be so interesting here as we work away. Let's get a little red. Hey, let's take a look at the, uh, the paintings that you guys did in my last one. If you're interested, share using the hashtag or the information there on the screen. And we'll, if we see it in time, we'll get it in the next video so everybody else can see it. It really is fun to see your paintings. You guys are doing such a good job. Look at that. That's pretty decent. Pretty decent. Pretty decent. How about right there? So we'll just keep playing around with soft color. We'll keep it soft today. Now I'm going to mix up a purple, but to the blue side, and we're going right up here. Now over here, I don't actually care. I've got trees. I got trees, so a lot of that's going to be covered. My trees are going to be quite solid, and it'll give us a very interesting base to work from. But we'll just blend this kind of purpley gray right into, and the reason it's gray, purpley gray, and not just a purple is because I did not clean my brush, and I kind of worked out of the same pile. See that? So a little bit of that yellow worked its way in. Of course, yellow and purple make a little bit of a brown. So there you go. That's nice. Now, I don't like necessarily that much of a purple going on. I think that's a little too much for what we're trying to do today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more blue at the top. Just blue right in there. See how you can make these adjustments. Nice. Yes, look at the difference. I like that better. Be careful not to get that blue too close to your yellow. <laughs> yeah, we've all done that. We've all done that. Just once you do it though, you only have to do it once or twice and you won't do it again, but there you go. That looks to me pretty good. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little more red into that. So you can just play around back and forth until you get it just the way you like. A little bit more of that kind of darkness up there. Good. All right, well, I've got a nice light white color going right there. One inch brushes, just white with a little bit of yellow. I've got a tree trunk somewhere in this area. That's going to be like a big evergreen tree. And from the right behind that, I want this little bit of a glow. And so I'll just place in this light white right there. Now I know what you're thinking. What a mess. Look at all that paint. It's going to be impossible, right? To paint over that. But look, I've got a shop towel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mash that white in. At the same time, I'm going to be removing it. See that? Look at this. And you can do this multiple times. You do exactly what I'm doing here multiple times and you get that spot lighter and lighter. Okay. Let's go again. Right here. When you're doing two things, you're removing extra paint, you're mashing that white down into the weave of the canvas so that it can't go anywhere. Oh, isn't that good? I like that. And then you just kind of feather it out. Honestly, that's about all you need. It wouldn't hurt to sometimes, sometimes you can really get a decent texture just by using, just by using the shop towel and rubbing and wiping. And by removing paint, you can kind of highlight. See that? And then if you need to blend that in, you can, but sometimes you don't have to. Oh, it's pretty. That is so pretty. There we go. Now I will say one thing, because your fingers may get kind of messy. A baby wipe of all things, I don't know if I ever talk about this or not, but a baby wipe will take the paint off your fingers and it works really good. And uh, I've, I've been using them way before I ever had a little guy. And they, they work great. But anyways, I believe that that's about it for our sky. I might do a little blending, but I kind of like some of the movement. It needs to look like it was painted with a brush or a paper towel <laughs> and not with an airbrush <laughs> there now I did a quick sketch here which helps a little I think it kind of helps us know where we're going and I want to create 
I just took, I don't know if you noticed or not, but I was, while I was doing the sky, I was just placing some of that color right down here to, you know, to the, uh, to make mountains with the same color. Like little tree covered mountains really is what it's supposed to look like. But now I'm just placing very faint texture. See my color all kind of muddled together. Very faint texture. Just with the filbert brush there. Let me, let me scoot back on the handle so you can actually see it. You know, that's why they make the long handles, right? So that you can see it <laughs> and my hand doesn't block the shot. I should use it more often. It seems like half the time I'm blocking the, the camera. There we go. We'll come down maybe with that. Good. What do you think? Not bad? That's not bad at all. Not bad at all. It's a good texture to it. Kind of blend out the bottom. See, by using very little paint on the canvas, I've got a lot of control over what happens here. Oh, I really do. Because of the little paint that's on there. You get some fog or mist right there. That looks good. And right here, I want to get just a couple of lighter trees, still staying in the very warm tones, something just a fraction darker. Oh, just a couple of little trees. Even warmer, even warmer. Oh, you know how it is when you paint subtle. Just the tiniest change of color makes a big difference. There, it's the easiest evergreens to make with the filbert brush. It just mushes the paint right in. Give yourself a little line and you just mush down. You could certainly use the detail brush, but the filbert brush is so much faster. And honestly, you get just a wonderful result. See this? Those are going to come down and meet somewhere here. Probably do another layer. I'm going to have several layers going on back here. Well, now let's go ahead and work on that tree. Just get it in here. It's not going to be too big of a tree. Actually, fairly small. There's my color. It's a warm, a warm brown. Makes sense to have warm colors in this painting. I don't want to go anything that would be too weird. You know, we have some cool colors, but mostly warm. All right, that looks good. Now you see I've just smushed in some, some gray over here. I uh, probably want to make that a lot darker, but I, I want to go slowly at that so I don't overdo the dark. A lot of that is going to be covered with snow and whatnot. A lot of underbrush down in here. That's pretty good, although I think it needs a little more work. We'll worry about that later. Some burnt umber maybe in there. Black, not too much black in these winter scenes, actually. If you go with too much black, it starts to look a little weird. Not too much black. Now right up in here, we'll continue maybe just getting in a, getting in a little bit of a tree with no leaves. There we go. Oh, that's good contrast, isn't it? And I like to work on these sort of trees fairly slow. What about you? <laughs> See that? Just so that uh, so you don't have any issues. There we go. Maybe um, another branch or another tree or something right there. I don't know. Be quite a few branches off of this tree. There we go. Maybe. Well, we'll just take our time. You can always do a lot of that with the liner brush as well. But you know me. I get it done with a filbert brush if I can. Nice. Sometimes it's easier to work from the outside in toward the tree. Just depends. Now using a filbert brush here, I'm going to create a few branches to this evergreen. Actually, these don't have to be anything special special because they're going to be so covered with snow. I don't think you really notice that it's just going to be dark color underneath. So I'm just smooshing it on kind of any, any which way kind of haphazard, just smooshing it on. I'm, the only thing I'm really watching for is the negative space here. The sky that I can see through the tree. That's all I care about. That's it. Yeah, that's about right. It's not, uh, it's not too critical, is it? It's just kind of, however it falls out of the brush, it'll be okay, as long as you don't fill it in overly solid. That would not be so good. But there you go. You probably need to absorb a lot of this with the shop towel before we finish it up. I would say so. 
And like I said earlier, I'm really thinking that a lot of this is gonna be a lot darker. I just haven't got there yet. I'm gonna work it in slowly. And definitely more blue toward the bottom. <laughs> I didn't really get that tree trunk aligned very well. For some reason, it just doesn't look quite right. There's the new tree trunk right there. I think that'll work great there. I'm just gonna drop in some more trees. It seems like about all we're gonna do today is paint trees, doesn't it? And just like everything else, make sure it's not too solid. Get a good foundation for these trees. You can pick, you know, do several of them and pick them out with, with your detail brush from, from the group. If you wanna do it that way, you can. That's pretty good. Right there, that is pretty good. Very similar in color to everything else that's there in the background. And I think that, you know, we're really gonna, we are gonna have to rely on that highlight to sort of make that, make those stand out. And that's, that's good. No issues there, no issues there. I like the little bit of negative space. Okay, now as we move forward, some of my trees are gonna get a little taller, definitely gonna get a little sharper. There we go. So we'll just work on, say you can smush in a lot of color and then you come back and just make a good looking top to the tree. You don't have to worry about the whole thing that way. And it will save you a good amount of time. Well, I've got a light yellow mixed up here. Not terribly vivid. I think if you go too vivid, it'll just look odd, but a very pale yellow. And right somewhere back here, we'll just begin forming our land. I'd say maybe get, you know, the bulk of it in and then worry about, you know, the shadows and whatnot. Just get it in first. Get it in first. You can easily add shadows. I mean, don't you know, it's easy to <laughs> make this all kind of dark and muddy. It's kind of hard to get the bright, so you focus on the bright highlight first. Be careful. You know, going around that tree will probably do it more with shadow than highlight. just makes it easier. A little bit of a... A little bit bump, a little bump there. We'll be adding more brush and whatnot. But just place in this yellow anywhere you think it needs to go. Leave everywhere else open for the for the shadow. You can, as you get away from you know the middle of the painting, you'd like to probably do some some reds, especially here toward the foreground. Just just change it up. That way, it's not all just the same boring all over. But by doing the trees first, check this out. You can literally just grab that color and pull it in and around. See, because I did the trees in basically just a purple. So you can just pull it right in and get all these shadows there and help the trees look grounded. And, and it just, oh, it's so good, it's so easy. That's why you do it in that order. See that? So you can just pull your shadows. Excellent. Our light source, of course, very, very simple. You can't miss it. So with that in mind, it's it's more or less kind of backlit, but a little bit on this right side here. So I'll place on some highlight to the right side of these trees. This is the quarter inch flat brush. You could certainly do this with just about anything else. The detail round would be great for this, but I'm being very delicate. You'll notice the most important thing. See how I'm not going straight in like a pencil, but I'm turning the brush like flat, almost uh, parallel with the canvas. What that does is it makes the brush softer. It's already a very soft brush, but it makes it softer. And so it cut, it won't cut through the paint. <laughs> I was gonna say it cuts through. No, it doesn't. It won't cut through the paint. And that helps to layer without creating mud. So there you go. Work at it slowly. There's only just a few trees right here. I'm, I won't go so crazy on this one. These two trees are really, front and center, so I'm spending a little extra time. I like them, this one looks like it's been broken. This one's kind of short. It just gives a little character and interest, I think, to this painting. Don't have to go, like I said, too far with the with the highlight itself because it's more or less backlit. Focus a lot on just the edges here. There, a lot of snow. See, by having it round like that, mounded, you get that really snowy, thick, snowy look. That's pretty interesting, I think. I like that. So now I'm gonna place on, as you see here, a couple of branches, although it won't be, won't be too many to these trees here. 
Just enough to give it a little interest. Bring that trunk down a little. That looks good. Just add those details. Just enough. And maybe down in here, because this tree is closer, you, you would expect to see a lot of little details on him. So we'll do that, you know, a lot of little things. So I'm take my time. Now this is really blank in here. This is one big blank section. So in order to make that look far away and this look close, we kind of need some stuff sticking out of the grass, or of the grass. We need like grass and whatnot sticking out of the snow, right? But maybe on this side we have a, a bush or something along those lines. I'm gonna lighten that up with just a little yellow. Check this out, just a little like maybe yellow ochre. It doesn't need to be super thin because there's not a whole lot of paint or anything going on up here. The more paint you have, the thinner this needs to be. But sometimes these little liner brush bushes just make a big difference, don't they? And what that does is it kind of stops your stops your eye from flying off the side here where it's so blank. And it really makes it more interesting. Bring in some more. So anyways, you see I'm taking my time, right? There's not a big rush for this. I stand back, make sure, oh yes, that is so good. I really, really like that. And keep keep it going, you know? Keep it going, why not? You would expect there to be a lot of layers to stuff like this. Yeah, that's good. Oh, that's good. This is where I think just everything's coming together, starting to look so interesting with that dead bush there. Good, 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 good. Okay. Hey, it's all right to get excited about a dead bush every once in a while. Well, that's about it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing these really soft colors. It was a little different, but I had a lot of fun. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button, that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.